And what's going on Midnight Mafia? I just first want to start off by saying thank you guys last week for the first time in a bunch of months we hit our 70 like goal which means this week we get a bonus story. So on this story as well if you can get it up to above 70 likes that way we get another bonus story and I'm telling you the bonus stories are going to be just as good as the regular stories. But I got a great story for you today. And before we begin real quick, just make sure if you haven't checked it out already, I got new merchandise that I've been working on and I even got more designs that I'm gonna put up this week. So literally check it out here, here, here. Just click on it, see if you like it, see if it's for you. If not, in my description, hit Patreon. See the perks and the different levels. Did you know you can get one extra story a month and then with another tier, you can actually have two extra stories a month? Just letting you know in case you're missing out. I I don't want you to miss out. But anyway, I love you guys and I'm really excited to tell this story. So without any further ado, as of now, it's time to slip into a mind that's not our own. Let's go. This story takes place well over a hundred years ago. In fact, in the late 1800s, the vast, untamed wilderness of the American frontier was a place where dreams were born and nightmares came to life. Amidst the rolling hills and the windswept prairies of Labette County, Kansas, a family that was very unusual would find their perfect hunting ground for their twisted desires. And their name was the Benders and they were a family of four and would soon become one of the most notorious and feared names in the archives of American history. Okay, so the Bender family arrived in Kansas in 1870, just a few years after the end of the Civil War. Now, the family consisted of John Bender Sr., a grizzled, intimidating man who was in his 60s, and then his wife, Almira, a heavy-set, unfriendly woman who claimed to be a psychic and a healer. And then there was their son, John Jr., a tall, handsome young man with a peculiar habit of laughing at inappropriate times. And then, yes, there was their beloved daughter, Kate, a beautiful and charismatic young woman with a talent for luring unsuspecting victims into their family's web of deceit. And the Benders actually settled on this huge 160 acre claim along the Osage Mission Independence Trail, also known as the Osage Trail, a well-traveled route that brought a steady stream of settlers, travelers, and prospectors through that area. They ended up building a small one-room cabin that served as both their home and a makeshift inn and general store. So basically, they slept there, you could buy things from there, and also, you yourself on the road, if you needed a place to sleep, they got you. And the cabin was simple. It was just, you know, this rough hewn structure with a large canvas divider, like a sheet, basically, that separated the living quarters from the public area where guests would eat and socialize. And some weary travelers who stopped at the Bender Inn were greeted by the charming and attractive Kate who would engage them in conversation and flirtation while they enjoyed a hot meal and perhaps a cold drink. Little did these unfortunate souls know that they had just stepped into a real life horror story. One from which, sadly, they would never escape. You see, as the unsuspecting guests relaxed and, you know, kind of let their guard down talking to Kate, John Jr. and John Sr. would be lurking behind that canvas divider, which was just basically a sheet, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. And they would be armed with these hammers and these knives, and they would creep up behind their victims and then deliver a crushing blow to the skull. After that, it even got worse because then they would slit their throats and relieve them of all of their valuables. You see, the bodies of the Bender's victims were then dragged through a trap door in the floor of the cabin and dumped into the dark, blood-soaked cellar. Talk about a nightmare. But there, in the flickering light of a lantern, Kate and Almira stripped the corpses of anything of value. 
and then they would haul them out to this nearby apple orchard for burial in a very shallow and unmarked grave. But you see, this wasn't just a one-time thing. This grisly routine played out over and over again over the course of several years as the Benders claimed victim after victim after victim. Now, the exact number of people who fell prey to the family's murderous ways is actually still a mystery, but some estimate the range from a dozen to more than 50. And despite the growing number of disappearances in the area, because you gotta remember, back then in these little settled towns, there were not a lot of people and news traveled really fast. So despite just these people that would come and stay at the end and end up disappearing, the town finally started asking questions, but the Benders managed to evade any suspicion for a surprisingly long time. This is because they were liked by their neighbors, who saw them as, you know, just another hardworking pioneer family trying to make a living on the unforgiving Kansas frontier. And Kate, well, Kate in particular, was known for her charm and her beauty, and she used these qualities to great effect in luring potential victims into the inn. However, as the bodies began to pile up and the whispers of foul play grew louder, the Benders knew that their time there was running out. And in early 1873, they made the decision to flee, abandoning their blood-soaked homestead and vanished right off into the wilderness. And it wasn't until several months later that the true extent of the Benders' crimes was actually revealed. I mean, in March of 1873, a group of concerned citizens from the nearby town of Independence formed a kind of vigilante group or committee to investigate these disappearances and get to the bottom of it once and for all. So a bunch of them piled up. They all rode out to the Bender property where they found the cabin that was abandoned and the livestock left to fend for themselves. So if you could imagine right now, as the vigilantes were searching throughout the property, they stumbled upon a scene of unimaginable horror. In the apple orchard behind the cabin, they discovered a series of these shallow graves, each containing the brutalized remains of one of the Bender's victims. And the bodies at this point were in various stages of decomposition, but all bore unmistakable marks of a violent and gruesome death. Among some of these dead were Dr. William York, a well-respected physician from Independence who had gone missing while searching for a missing man and his young daughter. The daughter, a girl that was just eight years old, was also among one of those bodies that was found in the orchard. Her skull had been crushed and her body bearing the signs of sadly a slow and agonizing death. At this time though, the news of the Bender's crime started to spread and the entire nation was shocked and horrified. Remember, this was over 150 years ago. Newspapers from coast to coast carried breathless accounts on the bloody Benders and their reign of terror on the Kansas frontier. So for the bloody benders at that time, these wanted posters offering huge rewards for the capture of the family were posted in every town and in every city. And posses of armed men just set out to scour the wilderness for any sign of the fugitives. And despite the efforts of the lawmen and the bounty hunters alike, the benders were never found. Some claimed that they had been captured and lynched by vigilantes their bodies thrown into a nearby river or buried themselves in unmarked graves. Others believe that they had actually managed to flee to Texas or their Indian territory at the time where they continued their murderous ways under different names. You see, years turned into decades and the Benders faded into legend. Their story became a cautionary tale told among campfires and in saloons across the West. But even as their names became synonymous with evil and depravity, the true fate of the family still to this day remained a mystery. And over the years, there were sporadic reports of sightings and near captures, but none of these things ever had a definitive resolution. Some have claimed to see the charming Kate Bender living under an unassumed name in New York City. 
while others swore that John Jr. had been spotted in the gold fields of California. But despite the best efforts of law enforcement and amateur sleuths alike, the Benders remained elusive. Their ultimate fate a tantalizing mystery that continued to captivate the public's imagination. Today, more than 150 years after their bloody crimes, the Benders remain one of the most notorious and fascinating cases in the archives of American crime. I mean, their story has been subject to countless books, articles, documentaries, and has inspired the works of fiction ranging from petty deadfalls to Hollywood films. But perhaps the most enduring legacy of the Benders is the way in which their crimes changed the face of the American frontier forever. In the wake of their murders, a sense of fear and mistrust began to spread across the plains. And as settlers and travelers alike began to view one another with new eyes, instead of you are now my friend, my neighbor, they thought you could potentially be a killer, a murderer. So clearly the once welcoming frontier with its promise of opportunity and adventure had been forever tainted by the specter of violence and death. For the people of Labette County in Kansas, the Bender family will always be remembered as a dark and terrible chapter in their history. The scars that were left by their crimes are still visible today. In the overgrown apple orchard where the bodies were found and in the haunted eyes of those who still remember the stories of the bloody benders and their reign on the terror of the Kansas Plains. But in the end, the story of the Bender family is a testament to the enduring fascination that we as a society have for the darkest aspects of human nature. Plus, it's also a reminder that evil can lurk in the most unexpected of places and that even in the most charming and attracted among us can harbor the most twisted and horrifying of secrets. And as we continue to grapple with the legacy of the Benders and the many other monsters who have stalked the pages of history, we are reminded that thin line that separates civilization from savagery and of the constant vigilance that is required to keep that darkness at bay. Because in the end, the story of the Benders is not just a tale of murder and mayhem on the American frontier, but a warning to all of us about the depths of depravity that lurk within the human heart. Now, if you just absolutely love true crime and you wanna see an even crazier story than this, make sure to click right here. But also, if you wanna see something more paranormal or mysterious, make sure to click right here. And that's all I got for you guys today. I'll see you next time. Cheers.